G'day, Andy from Single Malt. How you doing? Today uh, we're going to do the Spayburn 10 year old. Now this is uh, a Highland whiskey. Um, it's, a, it's a bit confused because it calls itself Highland here on the label but um, it also is within Speyside so there's that ongoing um, confusion about whether or not Speyside should hold its own um, appellation if you like quite distinct from Highland or is it a uh, is it a, an appellation within the greater Highland region um, this whiskey was built in 1897 by a chap by the name of John Hopkins um, it's a really beautiful whiskey you see they feature the photograph sorry it's a beautiful distillery I should say and they even feature the distillery on the uh, packaging. Um, it's known locally as the gibbet or the gibbet, I think it is the gibbet because um, it's on the hill of the gibbet. So a gibbet is a uh, is the thing that you hang the post out and you're hanging somebody off it swinging in the wind. Um, so this distillery was built on a hill where they used to hang people and uh, a bit of folklore says that the, the person they choose to be hanged was the last person to pay their rent to the laird. So the tax collector would go around and if you were the last person to pay their tax for the year, well, you'd go up to Spayburn Distillery and have a bit of a swing in the wind. <laughs> it's a very morbid story, and I'm sorry to... I don't want to dissuade people from, from this distillery, but it's um, just something that I found quite, quite interesting um, when they talk about it. Anyway, let's get on to brighter things and let's have a look at how bright this whiskey is. Oh, it's in a nice steel tube, it makes lots of noise. Okay, we can see it's quite a light yellowy colour. Not a lot of bronze in it, so limited if any um, sherry ageing there, predominantly. American oak barrels, I would have thought. Um, what is a very surprising stat about this whiskey is that they sell 350,000 bottles every year to the United States. It's probably more now because that stat's about five or six years old. Ooh, it's really gingery. Um, so they sell heaps of this in the United States. Um, so the Yanks tend to like bourbon finished whiskies, I guess. Um, there's plenty of barrels around, so because the market there is so high, it needs to be a mass produced, not mass produced, that makes it sound awful, but a commercial, commercially produced whiskey, produced in sufficient quantity that can supply the US market. So this is, um, hence the need to use American bourbon barrels. It's a very bright whiskey. Well, it does seem to be retained in it some micro micro bubbles. As I said initially, very gingery, very gingery actually. I love ginger. So we've got bakery Smells a bit like a bakery, not really gingerbread, shortbread, scone, those, oh, yum. Country Women's Association kind of flavours. Mmm. Really hazelnut and almonds. And that ginger just punches through. There's a lot to this whiskey. 
Gee, I can see why it's such a big seller. It's really easy to drink, but it's not simple. It has layers. It's fascinating, actually. That's a really charming little whiskey. It's not, yeah, don't be, um, don't be dissuaded. This is, uh, this has got plenty to it, and it's very, when I say it's easy to drink, I don't mean that in a bad way. I actually mean it's, it's a very, very, very good way. It's not overly challenging, but if you go looking, there's plenty of interesting flavours in there. Mmm. Spayburn 10 year old. Mm. Quite a good dram, but not worth losing your head over. <laughs> so stay off the gibbet, the gibbet, whatever you say.